Joe. Joe on Joe is the only podcast where Joe talks about Joe. And now, your host, Joe Slepsky. Hey everybody, it's me, your host, Joe Slepsky. Welcome back to Joe on Joe, the only podcast where I've covered every episode of G.I. Joe, the Sunbow cartoon, the D.I.C., even extreme, and every issue of the Marvel Real American Hero comic book, page by page, panel by panel, which is relevant today, because this week is another edition of You on Joe, where you, the G.I. Joe fan, whatever it is about G.I. Joe that you absolutely love, the comic books, the ephemera, the action figures, it is all on the table for discussion, whatever it is you want to talk about, you are the star of the show. So if you want to participate and be a guest, please reach out on social media. Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram at Joe on Joe Pod, or you can send an email to me at Joe on Joe Pod at gmail.com and let me know what topic you'd like to cover. The more specific, the better, but we will get into it. And while you're online, please give me a rate and review on your podcast app. Every review helps grow the show, or if you're inclined, please visit my Patreon page at patreon.com slash Joe on Joe Pod and help keep the show afloat that way. And while you're at it, please keep our wonderful sponsors, the Movies and a Meal podcast, in your thoughts. In the beginning of time, the smallest organism gained sentience and thought to itself, I really need a good meal. Then, a bunch of other stuff happened, and finally the Lumiere brothers started showing movies in France. This was all the inspiration that fellow broadcasters Brad, Keith, and Ben needed to combine these two primal needs into the Movies in a Meal podcast. The Movies in a Meal is one of the most casual and relaxing film talk podcasts you could ever listen to. These three friends enjoy a good meal together while talking all about the movies. And not just reviews, they do favorite lists, comparison discussions, genre talks, anything and everything that you can think of. They've even broken their solemn promise inherent in the name and branched out into TV talk. So I love the variety of films they bring to the table. They cover new releases, classics, cult films, often in one episode. It's really a delight to listen to, and it has something for every movie fan out there to enjoy. So if you're looking to grow your podcast library, if you eat meals, and if you've ever seen a movie, then you should give Ben, Keith, and Brad a listen and subscribe to the Movies in a Meal podcast. They've been a great sponsor to this show. I love the Movies in a Meal podcast, and I'd like all of you to love them too. Now, last week we discussed Snake Eyes. So this week, it makes sense to follow up that conversation with more ninjas. The revelation that Zartan assassinated the Hard Master. My guest this week is John Cooper, owner of The Treasures Unknown, an online collectible shop specializing in 70s and 80s toys and memorabilia. They just had a massive G.I. Joe auction and still have all kinds of great stuff on their eBay page. Now, find John at The Treasures Unknown on social media. You will absolutely see something that you need in your collection. I know that I did. And John wanted to talk about the mind-blowing revelation that Zartan, of all people, was involved in that ninja drama. That means it's really all about a Real American Hero 45 today. That's what we're talking about. It was revealed that Zartan was the one who impersonated Storm Shadow, and that way back in issue number 27, Storm Shadow was not lying to Snake Eyes when he said that he didn't kill his uncle. Uh, Spoiler alert, I guess, maybe. Spoilers? 40, 35 years old? Together we break down issue number 45. The absolute masterful pacing of it, uh, the way that Larry Hama took his time with the revelations, Literally over the course of years, making us savor them as part of the ongoing saga. It wasn't just an event book. It is just the best era of G.I. Joe comic books. And I was really happy to discuss them again with John. So please enjoy our talk of Zartan, ninjas, and murder. Just odd that... I, I, it feels odd for me to be being interviewed about G.I. Joe's on a podcast. <laughs> <laughs> Listen, that's the thing about this show, John Cooper, is that uh, G.I. Joe is, is universal. Even yeah. if you're not someone who absolutely grew up rabid with it, you, you're aware of it. It's influenced. Uh-huh. It, it's somehow come into your life. You've seen it. And what I always like to say to my guests, you know, maybe such as yourselves, but, you know, some. A lot of times maybe there's some younger folks that come on here is everyone was into something when they were 10 years old, everyone, yep. you know? Um, so that love for that thing that you were into, whatever that thing is, that's the same kind of love that people have for GI Joe, you know? So there, that's that common thread that really, that really binds us. 
Uh, so if, if G.I. Joe wasn't your, your super jam, which you are a fan, and we are going to be talking about a Zartan. Yeah, when I was a kid, that was there was nothing else to me. Yeah, it was. It, I mean, I loved. Well, you can talk about, it, but it's like yeah. I loved anything He Man, Star Wars, but GI Joe was that was the one thing that it was. It just resonated. So cool, me. so cool, and a, a comic book, cartoon, t- the toy. Like, what was it? What, what touched you most? The comic book. Yeah. You know, I the. I love the cartoon. I used to watch it religiously, but it was, um, it was campy and it, it, that was the appeal of it. Mm-hmm. But, you know, when you see storm shadow fighting quick kick in the middle of the blizzard and quick kicks got no clothes on except <laughs> his pants and a sash. And then he beat, you know, I don't know if you would say he beats storm shadow, but it's like storm shadow was the quintessential ninja and in the eighties growing up for me, ninjas were, you know, above all else. I want, I think uh, my first, I, oh. nothing bigger than ninjas Correct. in the eighties. Absolutely well, nothing bigger. Set aside GI Joe. Ninjas <laughs> were everywhere in the eighties. We were fascinated with ninjas. Ninjas could do no wrong. Yeah. My, my friend Patrick, he and I were going to train to be ninjas, you know? So we were, <laughs> we were black belt magazine. I remember hanging from, you know, to improve my grip strength, I'd hang from trees and like sure. You know, try to oh, build, build well, up and... between between ninja grip strength and Luke Skywalker grip strength from Return of the Jedi, flipping himself. Grip yep. strength was key when you were a kid. You were like, "How but can I, I get it... my fingers to hold on to something narrow?" I thought it would be a much bigger part of my adult life than it has been, <laughs> <laughs> based on childhood. Well, that and quicksand, you know, we and all know. Quicksand. Yeah, that and quicksand, yeah. ninjas and quicksand. You, we used to make the paper stars that ninjas would throw. Oh, I did. I had. I would order the actual stars. Oh, like, you an actual. <laughs> we had stars. I. There was a guy, that where I grew up in New Mexico, a couple houses down from my grandmother's. He was, he made a, a katana in metal shop Oh, <laughs> and he showed it to me and I think he sold it to me for 80 bucks or something. Wow. And I, was, I mean, I was, uh, let's see, maybe 12 or 13. <laughs> and I remember being up on the <laughs> irrigation ditch behind my house, like, you know, slicing, yeah, yeah. you know, because I, I was going to be a ninja. I was convinced. There's a fabulous South Park episode that you just described they 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 all get ninja weapons and they proceed to murder each other yeah that's exactly it. like they do exactly what you described and then they they take and the south park level. Yeah. The next yeah, yeah 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 i think kenny gets a, a, a shuriken in the eye and all that yeah, yeah. but to kind of to, to bring it back it i so i enjoyed the cartoon but i just i don't feel they did the characters justice mm-hmm. in the way that the comic book did G- the comic book was the only comic book I have ever had a subscription to yep. that I, that I used to get in the mail in the brown paper sleeve and I would read it in 10 minutes and then have to wait an entire month for the next one. Yep. And, you know, just, you know, issue, you know, the silent interlude issue, you know, where you, where they reveal that snake eyes and storm shadow both have the, you know, the same tattoo was like, Oh my God, they're what, were, what is that? Were you reading it concurrently when that came out or did you get that as a back issue? Currently? Um, oh, wow. I think I started reading in issue two is when I, Holy and, cow. And I didn't yeah. have a subscription at that point, but mm-hmm. um, I remember picking up issue two and, it, but issue back then it was like, eh, it was more military, like actual yeah. military. And right. then it you know, kind of, as it progressed on, you started getting into these kind of more elaborate characters and, right. and man, I was hooked. And then you, you know, then the character or the figures came out and you had figures that related to the comic book and you could, you know, they had real names other than their code names and they had a whole backstory. Like they, the marketing was genius for that. And it, it sucked me in. That's great. That's great. So when you first encountered the, so you were reading concurrently. So if you're yes. if you're you're then reading it, you fell in love with Snake Eyes. Obviously, the silent oh, issue blows course. you away. Five months later, the Snake Eyes origin books land in your mailbox. Twenty six and twenty seven. It was like I, I I must have read those 
a hundred times each if, if you know if that was possible you, you were looking for clues you were like okay oh. there's a mystery here we need to solve this correct and you know that i think those issues were the first time i'd heard the word lrrp mm -hmm. or the, the acronym you know long, long range, range recon patrol. patrol yep and you know I, w I remember telling friends at school and they're like what's a lerp and i'm like <laughs> morons if you don't know you don't know um excuse me uh <laughs> <laughs> So yeah, it was. Uh, I I mean, it, it was just amazing, and the writing was so. I, I don't know. The writing just it just touched me well, in it, a way that no other book did. It was easy. It was easy. To, Larry writes very clearly, but also he doesn't pander. So it it was yes. giving us it was giving us a uh, an elevated. It's something to reach for, like you say, mm -hmm. the Lerp stuff. Yes, they they wrote the Long Range Recon Patrol in there you know, in the, in the, um, uh, editor's notes, but that was in there once. Uh -huh. And then it was used again and again and again. So if you forgot it, you'd have to go back and read it. Uh, yep. he used, he would use words like enfilade and maybe they explained it once, but otherwise you'd have to go to a dictionary and look it up. Yep. You know, like yep. he used real, real military terms and didn't pander. He just told the story and it, it, yeah. I think just, you know, broad brushing children's entertainment I think that was a key difference between a lot of the stuff that we that we came up with versus a lot of the yeah. stuff that's quote geared towards kids these days is that it's more towards meeting them where they are instead of meeting them a little bit where they want to be. Yeah, which is what the cartoon I think did is it it met them where they are. Right. And it it kind of it, I love the cartoon. Don't get me wrong. It, it you know it, it's it's cheesy and in in all the good ways. But the comic book was just like it felt like I was reading oh, like yeah. a Matt Bolin novel or something. Yeah, I mean the comic, the, the absolutely the co the cartoon was, um, I mean literally the animated version, and then the comic book was like the real life tales of them. You yes. Know? So you understood that they were, they could be telling different stories of the same people, but it was like, oh, this is the more real gritty version. Yeah. You know, and then imagine had they come out with a with a live action movie at the time, it would oh. have been that third tier of, and then there's the adult version, you know, like the there's yeah. the PG thirteen version for me. Here's the yeah. thirteen to fifteen year old version, and then here's the nine to twelve year old version. You know. Yeah. Although I will I say like, this earlier, you okay. mentioned Quick Kick and uh, and fighting in the snow in his feet in the cart in the comic book. There's famously, uh, I think there, I think Cobra's invading Fort Knox, and uh -huh. there's Torpedo running around Fort Knox in his full torpedo suit with his flippers on. <laughs> and I guarantee you, not once did any of us as kids go, well, that's weird. No, no, You're we like, didn't. it's Torpedo. Of course he's going to run around. No, <laughs> no, we didn't. So they both have their moments. I'm just going to say yeah. that. They both have their yeah. moments of what? On brand. Yeah, oh, that's so cool. So, so you get you get the uh, you get the secret origin of Snake Eyes, and uh -huh. and in telling that, they also basically tell you the secret origin of Tommy. You know, they're intertwined. Yes, and Correct. and you 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 spend an issue and a half going. This is why they hate each other because he yeah. lo you know he loved his family and then he murdered him. Blah blah blah, all that stuff. And then on the last page, you get a mic drop of I didn't do it. Yep, <laughs> exactly. Oh. And then it was, you know, I mean, obviously there's the, well, you're lying, but you know, it's like, if you didn't, then who did it? Right. Yeah. That's, that's just such a great way to plot it. Oh, a wonderful way to tell that kind of ongoing mystery. Yeah. You lead someone uh, right up to the moment and then you pull the rug out from under them, and, you know? And what I love, and I, again, I didn't, it didn't occur to me until you said issue 45 but that you go from 26, 27 to 45 mm -hmm. for the reveal, which it seems like that just wouldn't happen in today's, like no. it, it would be much faster than it, that. The whole thing would have been a six issue arc. Yeah. So they could wrap it up in a, in a tidy yep. little trade paperback and sell it to everybody. Yep. No, they, they were made different. They, uh, there, there was a, a rhythm to his A plots and B plots and C plots, mm -hmm. you know? Uh, and, and it was like a novel because you'd have, you know, here's yeah. this story. And then, oh, we're going to go talk about this story for yeah. a while and then touch back on the original story and then come up with it. Right. It was. Yeah, exactly. Right. It was literally an equation, you know, where you got, uh, you know, of the 22 pages, whatever the number would be, you'd get 12 to the main the main story, uh, you know, eight, six or eight to the B plot and then two or four to the C plot. And then the next issue, the C plot moves up to the B plot. 
yep. and the B plot becomes the A plot and so on and so forth. You know, and it's a rotating cycle, which for comic books is absolutely perfect. It keeps you coming yep. back every every month. And then occasionally you get a, a one shot, you know, which is, you know, which will just kind of cleanse the palette for you and kind of do a reset. And in this... <laughs> Yeah, and in this case, we had this this simmering subplot of the the totally unassuming, completely harmless looking. Although you know we we knew better just from his his appearances, uh, you know, taking the kid's gun and snake eyes. But the soft master traveling mm-hmm. through Springfield and on the hunt that was just this C plot that would march through these books and be like, what what is happening here? What is he leading up to? When is this going to come yep. to a conclusion? And your, your palate cleanser, you know, it, it, the first thing I thought of an issue that was a palate cleanser for me, and it, I will even put this either on par with 26, 27, or even above it as one of my favorite issues was the issue with Wild Weasel and Ace. Oh, 35. Absolutely. And I, you know, the dog fight, you know, action mm-hmm. was great. But at the end, when they both just kind of give each other the salute, hey, yep. good, good job. And then they went their ways. I remember reading that thing and that's how enemies, you know, it, it's like Storm Shadow and Snake Eye, or, well, I mean, well, so if you think of the cartoon, I, was, I was, yeah, in the cartoon, absolutely. And in the Storm cartoon, Shadow it was more spirit. spirit. Right. Yeah. yeah. Because they, they always, they always, the cartoon always, which was a shame, always struggled with Snake yeah. Eyes because yeah. he was mute. You know, they didn't know what to do with them, you know. Yeah. Um, but but, yeah, but so you're, you're, you're totally right. Yeah. Spirit. spirit I'm the, Specifically, I'm thinking of the Satellite Down uh, issue, the episode, when Spirit and um, and Storm Shadow go at it. They're trying Is to that where they're it. in the cave? Yeah. 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 And they're trying and, to go at the, it. The, and, mass, the mm-hmm. mass device or whatever it was. Oh, no. That's the mass device was different. But I mean, it's it's it showed up a lot whenever they would have Storm you know, Shadow. Oh, that, okay. Yeah, you're right. I think that was uh, the, another time where they where Storm Shadow had ended up giving him the 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 device the piece of the device yes. that he had. yeah. So and they did that was, yeah, and they did that a lot with Storm Shadow to kind of keep yeah. let you know that he had some. It's funny they took the the battlefield uh, honor, we'll say that Destro showed in the comic books, and they gave yes. in the cartoon they gave that to Storm Shadow, and in the cartoon Destro while not as much of a you know kind of a jerk as Cobra Commander. He didn't. Yeah. He was he was pretty into it, you know. And, and in the books, he was always a little distance from it. He was always like, "Well, you know, we'll do it if well, it he, suits my needs." He, and in the cartoon, the, he's like, "Yeah, let's do it. Let's grow giant vines. Let's you know, let's kill the Joes." Blah blah blah. And I'm sure this is t- talked at nauseum in in the world, but you know, when they changed the intro song from uh, Cobra and Destro to Cobra the Enemy, mm-hmm. you know, and it was yeah. just that slight difference that it you know because i i think and maybe you agree that you know destro was a hey highest bidder you know oh yeah hey, listen had- listeners as we cover as we covered uh extensively on on the previous week's uh frost destro uh, interview that we heard we unearthed a john we unearthed a, a lost tape of david frost sitting down with destro himself and uh it was a fabulous interview and this last week it was just last week Okay. And, yeah. Oh, yeah. 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 It was an actual interview. Uh, I say that okay. with tongue in cheek. And, and yeah, and it's David. Give it a listen. It's fun. And it's oh, uh, it's David Frost sitting down with Destro. We talk all about this stuff. And yeah, that that kind of honor is great. And and it, it's yeah. what it makes it great makes great for great character moments in uh-huh. telling all these stories because then characters don't necessarily act as as one may first expect them to. You know, they give they Correct. have a chance to surprise you and a chance to whatever. And then you do get the characters like you need the characters like Cobra Commander that are always just going to be just, I'm a weasel and I'm this, but then you got a guy that can come in and pivot and take the story elsewhere. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, So good. So good. And, and the issue before 45 also was a, was a palate cleanser, which if I'm reading it concurrently, you're like, you go, that's going from zero to 60 and, and 45 was like, uh, it was like airtight and lady J intro and you know and they're they're fighting these spores and you know it's a fun fine adventure but then the next month all of a sudden with no preparation not even a cover warning there's it's not even like oh ninjas in this issue yeah it's straight up oh yeah you remember uh soft master was running around figuring stuff out mm, here's the killer yep and yeah it's this so even you know and i i think i haven't mentioned it before but you know in our previous conversations i don't collect very much mm-hmm. 
But the one thing I do want to collect is I want to go get all the back issues of, you know, yeah. not necessarily all the back issues, but, it, you know, that chunk of my childhood, basically, that, you totally. know, well, that I read they, because it was. Yeah, they've been, just, they've been collected a couple times over the years. There's nothing currently in print. Um, uh, yeah. I know uh, Skybound recently got the, the rights to do yeah, to, to, yeah, yeah, to do G.I. Joe. Of My hope is that they do one of those thick-ass omnibuses, you know, and, and give us, like, 50 issues at a clip. So, like, you get three, like, three, because that's the other problem, too, is every time they've been collected by all of these companies, they've been in such small units that mm-hmm. they never sustain getting to the end of the run in one. Like, I think the first time they may, I think there may be one set of trades that maybe Marvel put out years ago that actually, yeah. if you get them all, you can have all of them in trade. Uh, but like if they muscle through and quickly in quick succession, release three fifty issue trades and then, you know, make it four and include, you know, and stretch it, include the annuals, include the order of battles, include the special missions, you know, basically all the Marvel stuff. So you get yep. four, four giant thick omnibi out of it. Actually, someone told me once it's, a, I guess omnibus is not a Greek, Greek root. So it's okay. not omnibi. It actually is omnibuses, which is really funny to say. Omnibuses. Yeah. But so you get, you know what I mean? So, but you get them, you release them once they're out there, they'll go up in value a little bit, but it gives all of us people like yourself. Yeah. Um, I'll certainly, but I've got a full collection, but I'll totally buy those omnibuses. Yep. And then you finally get them all. Cause it's the later issues that so many people have trouble tracking down because they're absolutely hard to get in, in collected form. Yeah. And I did try, you know, I went back a few years ago and I read issues one, I think one through five or something. And, and they were, they weren't quite what I remember them to be because they were more militaristic you know, like actual mm-hmm. military mm-hmm. and which that's fine. But, you know, when I'm thinking back, you know, thinking back to that period of childhood, it's like, this is what I remember. Yeah. And, you know, you got to get a few issues to get back into that. Yeah. Well, the, I mean, the line itself changed. So it's 82 yep. and 83 were the real, oh, real yeah. military ones. Yep. And in 83, they introduced, you know, the dust, the open shirt destros of the world, you yep. know, and, yep. and a couple other figures that weren't necessary. Uh, I think Mutt and Junkyard, you know, so they were military, yep. but they were a little different. And then you get to 84, 85 and it's, it's, it's all, it's open yep. season. I'm looking amazing and being different and not everyone being in camo and not everyone being the in best greens. Years of that line. Yeah, that's mm-hmm. right. So it took them a couple of years to find it too. So I'm, you know, I'm not surprised. And obviously the comics are going to reflect that. Yep. Yeah, totally. Um, and the other interesting thing about GI Joe 45 is we talked about a, B and C plots. The soft master is the B plot. It's not even the main plot. I'm, oh yeah, yeah. You're right. The B, yeah. the A plot is ripcord. The, the, the issue itself is called In Search of Candy. It's Ripcord going to get his girlfriend, Candy. He thinks she's uh, being held captive on Cobra Island. So he well, they forgot about that. Yeah, so he inserts oh. himself. Now, those those storylines collide when Zartan gets involved. Um, but it's just a slow burn uh-huh. over the course of this issue. As the two storylines kind of merge, Larry keeps checking in with first Snake Eyes gets this coded message from, from Softmaster. Then he goes to see Storm Shadow. It's real quick where they're like, are we going to go throw down? And it's like, Right away, that's nipped in the bud. Snake Eyes is like, uh-uh, dude. Here's what's up. And he gives him a slip of paper. Because, again, while, yes, technically, I know we've seen him use sign language, he never uses sign language, John. He never. Yeah. <laughs> they never, in the cartoon, in the comic book, <laughs> they always find a reason to not have him just sign. <laughs> Right. When you know the people around him would absolutely, like, like Storm Shadow 100% would know sign language. Scarlet would and you know, know sign language. If you, if you had asked me, has he ever used sign language, I would have 100% say, oh, yeah, he uses it all the time. But now that you mention that, it's like. Not all the time. They've shown it occasionally. Yeah. But most of the time, he's handing slips of paper to people or just kind of nodding his head. And people are guessing right. what Snake Eyes means. It's awesome. right. It's And I say this. I love Snake Eyes. It's, you know, yeah. he's, he's amazing. Um, yep. so then they go, all right, well, we got to go get, you know, they don't tell the reader who it is, but they're like, okay, we're going to team up. And then they give you a little bit of a recap of the whole story in case you forgot, mm-hmm. because it was two years earlier, Yep. Yeah. you know, and a lot happens, you know, in this, when you're a kid, you're that age, two years is literally oh, that's a one sixth of your entire life. Yeah. So if you're not rereading these all the time, you, you get this and you got to go, oh yeah, that's right. 
Because yep. you leave with the imprint of going, Storm Shadow killed him. It's, that's why Snake Eyes hates him. But yep. then you go, wait a minute. He denied he did it, and they left it as a as a as a loose thread, you know. Although if there was a ten year old that used the word loose thread, I'd be like, Yeah, exactly. Well, that was what me. Are, yeah. <laughs> Where your parents schooling you, kid? Loose threads, you're 10. Yeah. Um, but it works so well on a comic book of keeping you coming back month after month. They steal a Rattler and they head to, and while they're flying there, we get all these check ins with, you know, we get the C plot check in uh, with, uh, with uh, you know, Hawk getting his, his uh, general stars and things like that. Um, the progress proceeds certainly with Zartan tracking down. Um, Could you argue that your B plot is actually your A plot, but they're letting you believe that the A plot is the ripcord plot? Mm -mm. No? no, because the ripcord story. It's been so long. Like, I, yeah, I no, I hear you. I, I, no, I hear you. Well, I think it's, I love that they merge. And that's yeah. when, that's when he's at his best is, is when they do merge, when they're not, when they're totally disparate and he's jumping from this corner of the world. Oh yeah. We had guys working in Alaska too. And we had guys, you know, and it's just literally checking in on them. That's the most kind of juggly of not combining them. This is the perfect example of him saying, oh no, no, you don't realize this is all connected. And, mm -hmm. and we have been following Ripcord's adventure because we were invested in Ripcord, actually. The, the, his uh, Candy, uh, his girlfriend Candy, she, yep. was, she had been introduced as Bonga the Balloon Bear. We all fell in love with her. She was amazing. So on and so forth. So, oh, and her, you know, her, we learned her dad was a Crimson Guardsman and, yep. and all that stuff. So that, I think that had just as much prominence in my, you know, like in <laughs> okay, my attention yeah. span. And then all of a sudden it's like the rug's pulled and you go, oh, yeah, yeah. And guess what? Zartan's the killer. Ooh. <laughs> yeah oh it's so good and they even there's even a line about like uh i think there yeah this is the one where there's a line it's somewhere in here there's a line about zartan saying like oh i haven't used this in a while and you're like it's the same oh, that's... oh he used yeah. it yeah 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 uh that's... there's a nice split screen showing that zartan was dressed as storm shadow and that's why everyone saw storm shadow like Lyra's covering all his bases here wow and now now i have to go back and go through these this whole storyline yeah again. it's fabulous and what's even also this is just i'm trying to remember bits and pieces but you yeah. know 26 27 are, they're just ingrained but you know i like i'm happy to you know talk about 45 now because yeah. now i know exactly where to go it's back. so funny I, for me you know so those are the those are the key issues 26 27 and 21 um, right yeah, everyone obviously everyone adores Twenty One, and I a hundred percent recognize its place in history of comics and and how in and and actually the quality of its storytelling, all that stuff. But as a kid, I was like, I mean, I got it; it was special as a kid. But for me, it was twenty six and twenty seven. I'm I'm the same way. I, <laughs> I, I appreciate Twenty One. Yep, I love that it. it was the first re you know where you see Snake Eyes has the tattoo. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. I, and yep, you know, it was like that's cool, but. You know, yeah, there's so much meat on the bone yeah. in 26, 27. So when yeah. like when when I start, you know, you get a little older, start paying attention to pricing and stuff like that, and you you see twenty one start to go up, and I'm like, well, what about twenty six, twenty seven? Yeah, I agree. Those books are like I mean, I had to make sure I got first prints. I think I had second prints. I had to make sure I got first prints, you know, because like yeah. these are the books, man. Um, and yeah. and further to further support the ABC issue is once we get the reveal of he's the killer, that's it. We don't go back to Snake Eyes and, and, and Storm Shadow. They're still flying to Cobra Island. It, the story never checks back in with them. It stays on Cobra Island with Zartan and Ripcord going at it. Interesting. Yeah. All right. Well, okay. I, I'm, mm, there's one moment we show we see them landing, but at that point, it's also it's also really it's into the the B plot because now they've um, they're crossing paths with um, Candy's dad. And G.I. Joe is starting their Cobra Island or their Cobra Island assault too. So like all the C and B, everything's coming together. But as far as those two talking about, you know, the biggest issue of their lives, that's it. They go, holy crap, with Zartan. We get one more panel of Storm Shadow to show, hey, we've landed on the island. And then it's all about Ripcord and Zartan. Oh yeah. So you that does support your your yeah. A plot definitely. And do you remember the last page of that issue? No, I do not. Oh, it's Ripcord, or is it Zartan? It's someone looks like Ripcord crawling out of the mud because they're they're getting to they had gotten into a, a hand to hand combat uh, situation, and someone crawls out of the mud and says, "Ha, 
He thought he had the jump on me, but in the end, it was my will and strength that went out. And now I have the perfect opportunity. I can take over this one's identity and infiltrate his headquarters. They'll never know that I'm not one of them, but they don't say which one. Wow. Okay. But I mean, naturally you would assume Zartan, but it's not confirmed. You can't it's, confirm. Can't that. confirm it. He's dressed like he looks like Ripcord. He's because got, if they're on Cobra Island, you it, would. Well, Ripcord's in, Ripcord, Ripcord was infiltrating Cobra Island. Yeah. So, so it, him it saying, him saying, yeah, him saying, oh, now I can dress myself up like Zartan. Or in this case, it actually was Zartan saying, I can dress myself up like Ripcord and go back and infiltrate their headquarters. It's it so was great. such a great move. It was so, it's on par with. At the end of 27, Storm Shadow going, I didn't kill him. Yeah, yeah. You know, you le you're led up to this point. And you're like, oh, this is how the story's going to go. We're going to get a, oh, no, it's now going to continue into this. Now we're going to move into the subterfuge and, and someone's going to be impersonating somebody. Yeah. It's such a great, great issue. And when, and when not you, only, yeah, oh, go ahead. No. I was just going to say, you know, the storyline, you know, and this is kind of a tangent, sort of, but. Um, the cover art for that, I, I mean, going from 21, well, maybe not, maybe after, tw like the cover art just turned into something amazing. You're talking it, about Mike Zek. Every yep. cover was just fantastic. Yep. That's and, all Mike Zek, man. He just did his, the, the work of his life. And this is a dude who's really accomplished. You know, he drew the first mm -hmm. Punisher miniseries. He did. He's done a million covers. He drew that amazing uh, Wolverine scratching his claws and Captain America's shield cover, you know, which is just literally a legendary yeah. cover. His work on G.I. Joe is probably my favorite work of his stuff. All I mean, he did um, he did uh, Craven's Last Hunt, which I think is legend. Absolute yeah, stuff. But his cover work for G.I. Joe did everything. It did all the heavy lifting. Yep. It sold so many units of this comic book because he just picked the right po the right positions, the right angles, the right shadows, and, the and right moments to feature. Pre YouTube when you have the not the clickbait titles, but mm -hmm. some of his covers were a bit clickbaity because you're like you were expecting that. Or at least I, you know, I'd see the cover and go, oh my God. And then you're looking through the book for that. Oh sure specific thing and you're not you know it wasn't in the, the the spirit of it was in there yeah it wasn't necessarily what you're seeing on the cover yeah and but it it was just it was great and i i think he also it also benefited from being a toy line and being such a diverse set of toys that there was uh, a, another hand driving the need to market this stuff mm -hmm. right so you know left to, left to it's you know the x-men Wolverine's on every cover. Yep. Right. But at some point Hasbro jumps in and says, well, we need you to, you know, at this era it wouldn't have been um, like battle force 2000, but you know, they jump in and say, we need you to feature, you know, Zartan needs to be featured this year. And cause we're yeah. really pushing them. So now you're going to get a lot of Zartan on the covers. And then the next year you're going to get the next uh, set of people. So maybe it's, you know, uh, Zartan sibling is you know what I mean? So uh, like that works as an extra element of, of uh, creativity in the stew, you know, where they're saying there's a push to do some one thing instead of a lot of times it's just, okay, we know snake eyes sell. So let's get snake eyes on every cover, which yeah. the end of the line absolutely followed into that. But at this yeah. point it wasn't, it was, you got this great mix. You got this, the ACE um, dogfight issue. You got the previous issue was lady J and bats, you know? So there's always this highlight of these random characters and wide variety of characters that is appealing to, if if you don't love it this month, the next month something's going to be exciting for you. Sure. Yeah, um, you know, versus at, towards the end of the line, it was Snake Eyes, Snake Eyes, Snake Eyes, and and yep. if you get tired of that, then there's not much else to bring you back. So good. This is um yeah, this is great, and 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 then that read that part of the story sat there for a good number of years until they find they also they did a little more retconning and and said, oh no no, it yeah. was really Firefly, and you're like oh. Yep. That I yep. never I, we've well, covered even, that on the show. I never liked that Firefly no, stuff. Me, and there was there was even the if I re, gosh, correct me if I'm wrong on this, but you find out that Zartan is the killer, and then you find out that uh Snake Eye well, this was 
probably before that, but Snake Eyes' his parents were killed or his family was killed in a car crash mm-hmm. that was somehow orchestrated by Cobra Commander. It, well, it, it, that's also a, a, a later reveal. I believe we learned the Cobra Commander okay. crash stuff first, and then we get the Firefly stuff. But well, it, yeah, the Firefly yeah. was definitely. Yeah. yeah so though. in in twenty six twenty seven, they talk. They say that his family was killed by a drunk driver, and that's you yeah. just you just chalk that up to fate and bad circumstances. Correct. And what we later learn is that drunk driver was Cobra Commander's brother, and he, then Cobra Commander blamed that family for killing his, and then he learned that that family. Oh, so they, I am. He, yeah, so he it was okay. it was kind of like that. So then he said, "Well, who's that? What was the deal with that family? Oh, they were going to meet their military son. Oh, I'm going to go kill their son. Who's their that. son? Oh, their son's training to be a ninja. Go get him." <laughs> and, <you> know, <laughs> so he's like, "So you know, listen, as all good despots do, he's like, okay, I'll take that as a challenge. Give me, yeah. give me a couple oh, years. I just hired a ninja. Yeah. I'll, I'll <laughs> give me a couple years. I'm going to send Zartan. Yeah. So yes, he then sent Zartan. Yeah. To to the Arishikage dojo to assassinate Snake Eyes because he blamed Snake Eyes and his family for his brother's death. Yes. Yep. And because and remember, love... Snake was, uh, uh, Storm Shadow was imitating Snake Eyes' heartbeat. H- Hardmaster was. Well, yes, I'm sorry. Hardmaster was imitating, yes, Hardmaster was Snake imitating Eyes. Snake Eyes' yeah. heartbeat. Storm and, and Shadow, it... we thought, wanted to kill Snake Eyes, but it was really Zartan wanting to kill Snake Eyes. And I'm going to tell you a little secret here, but during my ninja training with my, <laughs> my buddy, we would lay underneath, the, we would lay on the ground and we would try to control our heartbeats. So, so when I read that, it was like, yes, this is so real. Like, <laughs> you know, like I've done that. Oh, yeah. Hundred percent. I used to throw. I used to throw those paper stars all over my basement. There's, there's probably some one hidden behind a couch somewhere. Yeah, that was it. It was that and um and Daredevil Billy clubs. I, I didn't. I, 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 I used to try. Oh, I didn't have like look like, real Billy clubs. I would uh-huh. just take sticks and try okay. to get them to bounce. <laughs> yeah. I, you know, I, I I think I did that. Yeah. But Daredevil wasn't a big. Um, like I started reading more marvel superheroes Uh but like gi joe was just like it had my attention daredevil for me was when i discovered born again which would have been i think i was maybe 14 or something like that so i was like 14 years old going like oh my god imagine if you could be daredevil yeah (laughs) then i was 25 still throwing daredevil (laughs) and ninja stars yeah no you know i used to i used to set up uh mirrors and play laser tag with mirrors i always thought that was fun so I would set up elaborate mirrors in my basement and then and then see how far, how many times I could bounce it and hit the laser tag. That was always a good time. Yeah, my buddy and I, work, we worked all summer to save enough money to buy a box of laser tag so we could. And then the summer is over, you know. Yeah, by the time you earn the money, summer's over. Yeah, you go exactly. back to school and you don't play it. Yeah. Like, well, now you got to go back to school. Well, this, I mean, this all this conversation, it all revolves around stuff we loved when we were a kid. and. Yeah toys and nostalgia and stuff which is what you specialize in john uh with your company uh the treasures unknown yeah tell us a little bit about the treasures unknown so dan my buddy dan and i we have been you know we'll call ourselves treasure hunters because we just you know and i've been doing it since i was a kid i used to go to garage sales with my grandmother and you know just i would not that i have a sixth sense but like i I just have this ability. I can look at something and go, Oh, this, it feels different. And then I go take it home and it's like, Oh, it actually is valuable. Mm -hmm. So I would do that growing up. And then I met Dan, um, our wives knew each other. So Dan and I became friends probably 20 some years ago and started talking one day about our love for, cause he used to go with his dad to like swap meets and things like this. So then we would, we just kind of compared stories back and forth. Like, Hey, I was over at the, you know, Goodwill or I was at the garage sale and I found this and, you know, he was kind of the only guy that would actually geek out about that kind of stuff with me. And then we kept talking, well, we, we should do something together. And years go by. And then Super Bowl Sunday in 2019, we're drinking some whiskey. (laughs) There was just like, well, are we going to do it or are we just going to keep talking about it? And then that's treasures. The treasure unknown was born on that day. And we uh, it's still part time. And we, I think I want to keep it part time because I don't ever want to feel like it's a job. Sure. And 
you know, it. I do know. I know that feeling. Yeah, absolutely. And it's not the most lucrative. I mean, it could be, but um, you know, I just I I enjoy it. It's it's something that I think Dan and I are looking more in towards retirement, where we can just keep doing this as long as we want. That's you know? I, that's the thing. To, yeah, I have got that long game in my head too. You know, I'm more comic book related, but like you've amassed a skill set of knowledge and the ability to discern things Yeah. Um, that, you know, yeah. When you get to that retirement age and you know, you, whatever, whatever happens, you know, fixed incomes or, or what have you, there's you, your mind is still there. You know, obviously, unless something terrible happens, John, Correct. I hope it doesn't happen, no, but you, your mind is still there and you yeah. can still partake, partake in that stuff. And that can absolutely make your well, life so much better. And you're doing it you're doing something you love. You're, yeah. you're sifting through history, you know, feel like a, like a Belloc in Raiders, you know, like we're, right. we're, we're traveling through history, Dr. Jones, like you're, you're holding all this great stuff. I'm on your, your eBay page right now. And you've just wow. got tremendous stuff. Speaking of Raiders, uh, you know, you've got the streets of Cairo uh, set up there yeah. from back in the day. Well, so we had Belloc, Saul. And so part of this collection that you alluded to a bit was. Yes. Well, well, tell us about that. Cause we, we that was a little bit before okay. we, we were on air. So you, you got a massive collection recently. Tell the listeners what that entailed. So we stumbled across it. Just, it was dumb luck. We were, we were buying a storage unit. We went to go pick it up, you know, and it was, we didn't, we actually lost the storage unit and then ended up getting called up on a backup offer. Cause the, the first person didn't pay. Wow. And it wasn't, it was a, it was designer purses. So totally nothing. Like we were looking at it, like we we're just going to make some money on this, you know, mm -hmm. hopefully. So we get there and there's this huge box truck loading up models and toys. And we, you know, we joke like, Hey, put that in our truck. And, um, didn't think anything of it. Then Dan goes to load the truck, ends up striking a conversation with them. We go downstairs, they show us what's left in their unit and we buy some toys from them. Mm-hmm. Well, that conversation th th led to another friend of mine just passed away, unfortunately. Mm. He has a very large collection. Would you be interested? This conversation goes back and forth for two months. Mm -hmm. And and we're at a point where it's like, this isn't going to happen, Dan. Like, it's, I think either somebody else is going to come in or they just change their mind and they don't want to sell it. We get a call right before New Year's of last year. Hey, can you guys come up and take a look? So we go take a look and it's a storage unit. It's packed full of stuff. Wow. Right hand side is I'm going to maybe it wasn't every, but it was 90% of the original Mego figures, Oof. superheroes in their boxes. Ooh, friend of so the I show, Austin Huff, pay attention. Yeah. So, you know, so I look over and like I'm immediately drawn to this and, you know, we start looking through it. And they said, well, if you take this, you got to take this. And it was 25 boxes packed full of Playmates, Star Trek, wow. 90s. I, it's not garbage. Like, it's not highly valuable. Mm -hmm. It's just they made so much of the start that era Star Trek stuff. Right. And he had everything. He had every figure in all the different lines. So we're like, okay, we'll do that. And we, so we bought that collection and I found a few GI Joe items in there, loose items. And I was a little disappointed because, you know, looking at the vast variety of collection, I thought he would have had more GI Joes. Mm -hmm. So we get a call back. Hey, if you guys want to come to the house now, there's more stuff we'd like you to look at. Oh boy. And he sends, he sends a single picture of a box full of the gi joe play sets you know the mortar unit the <laughs> bivouac yeah all boxed just like at toy you know oh, toys Up. yeah and i'm like uh yeah we're interested absolutely so we go there and he's like yeah there's some other gi joes in in the box over here so i look in the box it is it, it's not everyone every Almost every redback mail away wow. bag figure you could find. Wow. The Create a Cobra um, figure with sticker sheet, original. And these are so, this is uh, the, some of the things that were just at auction at Hakes. Okay. And it, that, that ended yesterday. 
but two of the 93 convention jinxes, both the black logo version and the blue logo version. Um, what else? It, I mean, on your site, I'm seeing like a mint on card 89 um, with a, a countdown, the astronaut. Yes. You, you I saw it um, uh, on card ripcord. So th those are the, the not lesser figures, but those are the figures that didn't go to auction. Yeah. They sent out, you know, there was almost a complete, there was a, a carded snake eyes, 80 nice. straight arm snake eyes. And, and were they, were, were the cards mint? No, they, they were in amazing condition, Nice, but not quite mint. You know, they had a couple dings. Some were unpunched. Mm. Um, That's huge. We had a, it, so there was almost the full 83 line carded. Uh, wow. There was a storm shadow a firefly baroness that's amazing uh, so that's that's all so that's sold through what's what's the uh hakes auction nice. nice and and, and that uh, that just ended so uh, great timing on the interview joe yes exactly you did real good joe sorry john i missed you on that um well that's great so but 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 you've got a lot of the stuff up on your ebay store it's it's treasures unknown uh yes. and, and you've got a whole, what what i dig is you've got a whole bunch of different stuff as well um i saw some like the original the tv show v which i was a oh, big yeah. fan of so and that's cool too. and we met and we met at the um the pasadena gi joe show yes you were showing some stuff there that was really nice and uh and so that's that's really great so listeners you need to go check them out it uh on instagram it's at the treasures unknown They've also got a Facebook page and a YouTube channel, all under that name. If you can't find it, then and, and we do have got, a if, you got real spelling problems. <laughs> if um, if anybody wants to see that collection in its entirety, oh, that, yeah. uh, just the GI Joe portion, mm -hmm. um, I went through every figure that was in there on, and it's on our YouTube channel. Oh my gosh, that's great! I think so, it's, I think it's titled. Um, and knowing's half the battle, or is the yeah little tagline on it? Well, that's so. awesome, listeners. So you, you definitely need to go check that out. Uh, and, uh, and John Cooper, this has been yes, a sir. delight. I would loved it. I you know, like I, I mentioned, I'm you know, what do you want to talk to me for? <laughs> but because you got I, your finger on the collector pulse, my friend. I really enjoyed it. Uh, well, thank you so much for being a guest on Joe on Joe today. I appreciate it. All right. Well, now you know more about G.I. Joe uh, 45, the reveal of Zartan being the killer, and Joeing is half the battle.